Hey YouTube, welcome back my friends once again to Photoshop Elements TV. Guys, I'm your host Jack and I'm gonna help guide you through the magical world of Photoshop Elements. And thanks to all the new subscribers out there. Uh, you know, it's nice to see people coming along here to this new channel. I know I'm not proven yet uh, in the Photoshop Elements world, but I have been teaching Photoshop Elements since like version one or whatever the first version it came out with. So as the title and the thumbnail gave it away, today we're gonna to fix a photo that I found here. Uh, it's a nice photograph. Uh, it's a nice subject, obviously, here of my uh, my motorcycle. And uh, But what I see here, it's very blurry. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. We're gonna try this and see if we can't uh, blow this picture up here a little bit and see what we can do. Um, Let's see here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's try to just blow it up here. I'll go right here. There we go. All right, we're going to zoom in on this photo. Here we go. All right. Now look here. I'm going to try to move this. Uh, let's take it down just a little bit here. And you could probably see there how blurry this picture is. I don't know what happened. When I took this picture. Something obviously happened, but I thought, man. If I could just clean this up and fix this picture. And the reason I wanted to do this video was because there's a lot of times you're going to take a, a shot and your picture is going to be absolutely, you know, a, a nice picture uh, for whatever reason. But maybe something happened. Maybe it's a little blurry. This one, it might have been a little darker outside. It's possibility. Uh, I didn't have enough lighting. Uh, the camera was set wrong, whatever. But I wanted to clean this picture up and I wanted to do this video because I felt if I can help you maybe clean your pictures up a little bit. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started here. We are going to back this off. All right. Just like so. Put it back to where it was there. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do to start working on this photograph, there's a couple different steps we're doing here. And I know a lot of you watching have said, uh, you know what? Hey, uh, Jack, can you slow it down a little bit? Uh, take your time. And I'm going to do that. So when I do this, so what's going to happen, I'm going to have other people complaining, hey, you're going too slow. You know, your videos are too long. Don't you know people like YouTube shorts? I want this channel to be a learning channel. I want you to be able to learn by what I'm doing, not just showing through the end result and saying, look how pretty this is. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started without any more BS here. So the first thing we're going to open up is the layers panel. Now, if you've never used layers before, and if you hear pauses, that's probably me drinking coffee. Okay. If you've never used layers before, the way I teach layers is, and a lot of you may remember this because I look at the uh, the folks watching this, okay? A lot of us are uh, of a certain age will remember this. We used to take tracing paper and lay it on top of a comic uh, in the newspaper, and we would trace out the comics, Right. Think of layers the same way. Anything on top of the layer, we can see through the layer to the bottom, the next layer down. All right. So over here in the layers panel, let's just say if we did layer, 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 layer. See where it got five layers here? So this fifth layer can see all the way down through all those other layers down to the bottom layer. All right. Let me just uh, see if I can't delete all these at one time. Delete layers. Yep. We're going to delete them all. There we go. Okay. So there's your basic idea of layers, how they work. The first thing we're going to do here is I thought what we would do first is we're going to do some sharpening of the motorcycle. Okay, we got to sharpen the motorcycle up a little bit. This is also going to sharpen the background up a little bit at the same time. So what we're going to do here is we are simply going to go up to uh, enhance and uh, we can do auto sharpening. You can do that and let the Photoshop elements figure it out for you. But we're going to go a little bit more detail. We're going to adjust sharpness. All right. So we're going to adjust the sharpness. And when this comes up, this is really 100%. I don't know why it does that. So we're going to back this off because we want to be able to see what I'm looking at here is the motorcycle itself. That's what that's my foreground picture. That's what I want to make sharper. Okay. Now you can already see here uh, since, yes, I have uh, done this before. I do uh, try to run through these uh, exercises before I video them for you just to make sure that everything is going to work the way it should work. So what I did was I went to custom and I'm looking at the motorcycle here is what I'm looking at. And I don't know if I could blow the bike up maybe a little bit. But you can see here where it's more detailed now. 
All right. So let's see if we uh, take the preview off, turn the preview on. Really, yeah. So if you're looking at the big picture down here, look down here on the bottom, okay, where, where my mouse is going over the motorcycle. That's the normal look at the motorcycles. You see how blurry that is? It's not sharp. But watch when I hit preview. I just sharpened the whole bike up just that easily, just by using adjusting the sharpness, okay? Now, the sharpness, again, you're going to just simply uh, amount of sharpening, how much, uh, you know, you're removing any blur, any Gaussian blur that was there. There was really wasn't anything on the picture at that time. Uh, and the radius, so where you want to set the radius. Once you get that done, just simply click OK, and that's going to adjust your photograph, adjust your sharpness to get that blurriness out. And already we can see where this motorcycle is starting to really pop, right? Look how nice and clear that is now. A lot better than where we had it. All right, good. Now we got that step out of the way. So that's step number one is to use the sharpening tool. And again, you can use the auto sharpening. See what it does for you. Maybe it's what you want. Maybe it's what you really need. And who knows? You know, maybe it'll work out fine for you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the background. Okay. So if we go up to, uh, let's see here, select and go to background. This is something new that I believe they put into 2023 or 2024. Yeah, this is elements. Let me see here. Uh, let's see here. Elements, about elements. You can see here with elements 2024. So this is the latest version. Uh, I used to have people say, well, that's nice, Jack, because, you know, they send it to you for free, and that's not true. I have no affiliation with Adobe at all. I wish I did, but I do not. It's just something I have a passion for. I've been teaching Photoshop Elements for years, and I really just enjoy doing it. So the, I buy these on my own. I buy them every year around uh, October, November. They come out the new version, and I do buy those. I did skip 2023 just to be very transparent. Okay, let's move on. Anyway, okay. So there we have it. The something new is select background. So let's go up to select and we go to see we can either select the subject, okay, the subject itself or the background. Let's try subjects and see what happens. All right, it did a pretty good job selecting the subject itself. Now, if I did a command J on that, let's see what we get here. What do we come up with? Okay, so what we come up with is the motorcycle by itself. You see that? Everything else is a transparent background. Whenever you see these checkerboards, that's transparency. That means there's no background anymore. If we save this, the only thing it would print actually would be the motorcycle. We're gonna now all I'm doing here is shutting the eyeball off. So the eyeball over here, if you see the eyeball, it says uh, indicates layer visibility. That's what those are for there. And then we turn that on, turn it off, do what we want with it. This is not what I wanted. All right, I didn't want this. So I'm gonna delete that layer. Because what I want to happen here is we're going to select and we're going to select the background. Okay. The background. Now let's try to do a command or control J. What I want is I want to work with the background. Okay. Here's the background. Look, now the motorcycle is transparent. Well, pretty much of it. Okay. It, it didn't do a perfect job on the antenna, <clears throat> but it did a well, a, a well. It did a good enough job for us to clean it up and have it ready to go. You're really not going to see the other stuff on the edit anyways. It's going to be just fine. All right, turn this back on. Okay, so now that we have that uh, layer one set up here, what we're going to do now is we're going to blur that background out. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go up here to uh, filter, go to blur, and we're going to add the uh, Gaussian blur. Okay. And again, you might want to look at this. This is set to 100%, but watch the background back here on the trees as we move this up. Let's move this up. See how the trees blurred themselves out there? That's very blurry there. I would not suggest to go that blurry. What we're trying to do is when you do this, you want the subject to pop. All right. A lot of people call this uh, soft focus, uh, background blur. You know, you hear a lot about this uh, soft focus when you're taking the photos itself. Uh, so we're going to set it to, now we're going to get a little higher than 10. Let's go up to uh, 15. Again, very much a personal choice. Okay. Click OK. <clears throat> there. 
That set the blurriness of our background. But being we cut the motorcycle out, look what it didn't do. It didn't touch the motorcycle. All right. The only thing we worked on was the background. So what we're going to do there is we're going to add now a layer mask. And I have a couple videos back uh, on this channel. If you look about layer mask, you'll see the layer mask in there. So we're going to click on add a layer mask. We're going to set the layer mask to white. Right. The reason I want to do this is I'm going to bring the trees up a little bit. I'm going to bring the foreground in focus and basically the trees a little bit more in focus and everything around the motorcycle, I'm going to leave it to be blurred out or soft focus, right? Just so it's easier on the eyes to see the transition between the background and the foreground. And again, this is basically fixing a blurred picture is what we're doing. And I know we just added blur to it, but we're going to clean that up a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our color selection over here is set to uh, the foreground is set to black all right which it is and all you got to do is click this little arrow here black white okay you can use x on your keyboard but make sure it's set to black the top one is what we're going to use to paint with now let's grab a brush okay brush tool now use your left or right bracket keys if you don't know what those are it looks like a, a squiggly line uh, type of thing. Mine is right on the right side of the letter P. Uh, let me look at a Windows keyboard, same place. Right to the right of the letter P is your bracket keys, okay? If we use the right one, look, we can make that brush bigger. We don't have to mess with that slider. What we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the bottom where it says opacity. Your opacity is going to be set at 100 because that's the default. Take that opacity back to 50, okay? And what we're going to do here, we're going to start painting over the trees just so we can bring them up lightly. Again, remember what we're doing here, guys and girls out there. We are taking the layer mask, this layer up here, and we're revealing what's under it. We know this is the picture under it right here, right? So let's go back, okay? Now, so we're revealing what's under it. But all I want to do is just barely bring out the trees. If I did 100% opacity, it would just bring them back to exactly what they were. So we're just going to barely bring out those trees and uh, just bring those up a little bit. Just to put them a little bit more in focus, but nothing crazy. I don't want them perfectly be in focus, but I don't want them all blurred out either. So I want something kind of in the middle. All right, there we go. Just like so. And I only want the trees themselves. And I figured, I looked at this earlier, like I said, and I thought, that's pretty good. All right, that looks all right. I really want the sky. I don't need anything else. Just the trees. Go back over. It's like my tool here. So now, as you see here, we have a lot of contrast between these two. I got the subject area, which this could be people, right? That could be a person. And I still got the blurriness of the of the ground here, right? But I got good separation now to this background, which is a little bit more detailed. And maybe, I don't know if that tree right there, if I got that old tree or what I did there, but there you go. Anyway. So now you actually see the contrast between the foreground and the background because it's separated out by this blurred out area here. It just gives that photograph just that pop that I wanted. And guys and girls, this is a wall hanger. This is how I create my wall hangers. All right. So what we're going to do now is once we're all done, I have a lot of people that say, hey, Jack, let me tell you what. Nah, you know, it's all well and good. You did that nice photo. You did the editing. And I sent my PSD file out to my developer and, and they couldn't develop it. Well, here's why. We have to go up to File, do a Save As. All right. When you do a Save As, we're going to give it a name. Um, uh, we'll call it um, Unblurred. Why not? I don't know what else to call it. Unblurred. Where are we going to save this photo at? All right. Uh, we're going to save it at the, I think it was at the Finger Lakes. We're going to save it in the Finger Lakes folder here under pictures. And what format? Not PSD. That's for Photoshop. That's if we want to save these layers and stuff over here so we can work on this later. I say mine as a JPEG. All right. Compress those colors down. Make a smaller file size. Get it ready to go out. You can send it out to your uh, Smug Mug or uh, your, you know, any other place out there. Smug Mug is good. 
Let's just think of the other one I was working on the other day. Anyway, so I would do largest file possible because you might want to blow this up, right? I like my photos to be huge on my wall. If you want to be a eight by 10, you could drop it down probably to, you know, nine maybe. And you're making this file size smaller. You see over here on the right, uh, I'll blow this section up right here as we're talking about it, but it does make this a little bigger right here. So there you go. All right, I just make it the whole way over and just click okay. So save it out. And then you have your photo ready to go. Let's show you here. Let's see if I can't bring this up under pictures, uh, finger lakes. Should be right down here. I'll open it up with my preview pane here. And here you go. All right. So there's the there's the finished product that we will have sent out and we'll get it printed. So a lot better than what we started off with. Folks, again, thank you so much for subscribing to these videos. If you're not subscribed to the videos, why not? And I know some of these will go a little bit longer than you know the five or ten minutes that you like. But I have to show you greater detail, and I know a lot of you are, you know, you want to learn. The only way to learn is by reputation, right? Do it, do it, do it, and do it. All right, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember, as I always tell you, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editor editing, and I'll see you back here next time on Photoshop Elements TV. Bye for now, everybody.